Over the years, I've migrated from making everything as good as I can make it along the way to let's get it on wheels and let's get it running and then we can go back and we can fix other stuff. A lot of you, I, I assume, will disagree with that. A lot of video, you know, YouTube videos, they are meticulous about every step of the way. But to be honest with you, I've got projects that's been on the hook for a long time because of that. And on this project, I want this project on wheels and I want it driving. Then we can figure out what we're gonna do to the details. Hello folks, today we're going to talk about frame swaps. Our next project is going to involve a frame swap. It's a 1971 international pickup. Okay, so 2002 Chevy Tahoe. Tahoe 66 and a half in the front, 68 and a half in the back. Has disc brakes up front, disc brakes in the rear. Has torsion bars, springs up front. Has coil springs in the rear. It also has the recirculating ball steering. This has the 8.6 rear end in it. This one actually happens to be set up for an LS, 4L60, two wheel drive. So this is what I'm gonna use on the 71 International to swap. The, uh, the wheelbase on this is 116 inches, which is pretty much where a short wide bed ought to be, 114 to 116. What else can I say about this? A Couple of the downsides, as you get more modern, the frames get wider. The old pickups, you can pretty much count on the frames being about 34 inches wide here and just slightly sloping back as you get to the back. From what I've looked at so far, the rear cab mounts are right here. The rear cab mounts are, are gonna go right through that gas tank, right? So that's not gonna work. So it looks like the front cab mounts are gonna go about right here. Any frame swap on a pickup, it's almost guaranteed you're gonna cut the front frame horns off. You just might as well go into it thinking you're gonna cut those off. The other piece is, before you take your donor vehicle apart, you need a reference measurement. The one I use is I get a measurement from the center of the wheel to the front cab mount on the donor. The front wheel has to align in the fender. Otherwise, it looks like shit. Go on now. Go on. Go. Go lay down. Thought I'd get the video out earlier, but life gets in the way sometimes. Probably more importantly to you guys is how I set up the cab mounts. So on the Tahoe, the center line of the front axle is on this edge of the shock tower. So I pull back 32 and a half inches. You can see the Sharpie line here on both sides. That sets where the center line of the front cab mount needs to be. So what you have to determine now is the layout for the cab itself. If you remember from the last video, the fuel tank sets right here. Later in the video, we're going to talk about uh, my attempt to make that fuel tank fit anyway. So. Well, that was a fail. Not, I guess I'm not, not surprised, but I got overly exuberant with the prying and not enough heat. And at least we learned how not to do it. You going to go get the tractor? What do you mean your legs are too short? Well, you never told me that. Okay, I guess I'll drive the tractor. All right, all right. Okay, I got it all welded. I think we're ready to set the cab on. Ralph decided he, his legs were too short, so I'm gonna have to put the tractor on, or put the cab on. So let me get it on.
So one of the issues we've run into at this point is that the cab mount brackets on the International cab is narrower than the Tahoe brackets. That's a mistake on my part. I should have should have fixed that while I had the cab off. So I pulled this radiator support off of the original frame. The task today is to get it welded to the Tahoe frame. I've already cut off the front frame horns of the Tahoe. The welded plate. Ah, oh, the puppy Fred just hit the camera. <laughs> okay. Made a paper pattern. There's our pattern. We cut it out of eighth inch, which is what the frame is on the Tahoe. My thought was follow the same angle as Tahoe frame and just box in the international radiator support. Looks like the wheel is pretty good. I'm pretty happy about that. We'll lower the torsion bars on this. How much do we need to take out of this bed so that it fits on the Tahoe and it looks right? I think I've got this figured out. Okay guys, well, you know, everything about YouTube is a learning experience. The camera got hot and the camera died. I think that looks pretty good. Assuming the bed fits that bed mount and the bed fits that bed mount, then I think the only thing that's going to interfere with setting the bed down is this kick up in this frame rail at this location and the spring pocket. pretty happy with that that looks pretty centered so if I got the holes in the mounts in the right place this actually could work out really well like a kid in a candy store folks pretty damn happy about this let me see if I can mark out underneath where I got to cut out for those spring pockets cuz I'm kind of I'm kind of really excited about getting this bed set down on those mounts see if it fits. I hope so guys. And in the last video we mounted the bed and I said that I thought that the rear bed mounts were too, about a half inch too close to the cab. The bed mounts themselves are were spot welded to the original bed. I didn't have it spot welded to this bed after I cut it off because I wasn't sure, I, I wasn't sure whether everything was going to fit. So what was happening, the front bed mounts were tilting because they weren't held to, they weren't spot welded to the bed itself. So what I did was I drilled a hole up through the, uh, I drilled a hole up through the bed mount into the floor and I put a quarter 20 bolt in there to suck that bed mount more vertical where it was supposed to be. When I did that, the rear bed mount bolt holes were in the right place. But as it turns out, there were there's two bed cross members that were getting in the way of the frame, getting in the way of the Tahoe cross member supports. And I started, you know, I cut out a little bit here and I'm like, I'm done. So I, I cut out the whole center section of the floor. So that's where we are on the bed. And I can tell you, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, this truck looks really good. Oh shit, that's not what I wanted. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna work on the brakes on this Tahoe. It had power four wheel disc brakes. 
I'd like to keep that. My original plan was to use the master cylinder and the brake booster, the power brake, the vacuum brake booster, off of the Tahoe. So I went and got it. You know, went down the pasture, took it off. I have it here. I want to try to line this up on the center line where it's going to go. And I don't know if you can tell that on the camera, but I'm going to have to put a hole in the hood to, uh, to clear the vacuum brake booster and master cylinder. Well, folks, there it is. I'm pretty happy about that. Okay, so what we've got is we've got the S10 lower section. I cut off a double D reducer, so this will go into here. Then I've got the collapsible shaft section. Then I've got the Fox body U joint. I'm gonna plug weld this. Okay. Well, we got steering now. Okay, I got it in here. Man, this thing's a mess. You know, the older I get, the more I feel like this little welder over here. It has a duty cycle. I must have spent way too many brain cells pondering how I was going to attack this, and I uh, didn't have enough left to actually turn on the camera, I guess. I don't know. I don't have any other explanation. Anyway, I'm going to walk you through what I did, um, just to give you some I Fred! Damn it! Yeah. I've got three of these, right? Remember I said I had my wife's grandpa's truck, I got my dad's truck here, and then we got a parts truck down there. I thought it was no big deal. I needed one of these, so I went looking on the other two trucks we got. They're all broke out. And the fact that I've got three beds and only one bracket left uh, probably is a strong indication it was a piss poor design. I don't know, we're gonna make this up as we go along. Caused by that crease right there, that should allow me to move this thing a little easier. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the little zip disc, I'm gonna cut along that edge right there, I'm gonna cut along that edge right there, and then I'm gonna split that crease right down the middle. Okay, well, that looks a lot better. So you see that clearance or lack of clearance? It would appear that over time, the bed sides have sort of tilted in. So I'm gonna get the port of power out. Ended up cutting a whole lot more than I thought I was going to have to cut. I thought I could just, you know, jack up this side of the bed and kind of straighten it out. Uh, no. You know what? I think we're going to call that good enough. <laughs> I just thought I was being clever. Still drop that thing down in there. The tailgate shuts. Let me do it one more time because it just makes me feel good. So what I'm thinking about is using a square body shifter mechanism. So This is the radiator that came out of the 2002 Tahoe. Even still got the caution fan readable. I don't know, you can't ask for anything more than that. Sometimes even a blind pig finds an acorn. The radiator is mounted. It's like a 2000 Jeep Grand Cherokee fuel tank. And we're gonna see if this is gonna fit into the hole that we got underneath the back of the bed there. Fred, you're you're blocking my sunlight, buddy. You can watch me, you know, hands, knees, elbows, head. Try to put this tank back up underneath there. Well, damn. 
That was easier than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> I squeezed it too hard. Dadgummit. Yeah, don't do that. So, I've got two pieces of, well, it was one, one one by two piece of oak. This one I made to do 3 8 line. This one I made to do 5 16 line. This fuel sender isn't going to operate the international gauge. So what I did was I just took the potentiometer off the international fuel pickup and I mounted it on the Jeep fuel pump assembly. Well, sometimes the world just conspires against my hot rodding. You know, I was bragging early on that I had all kinds of room between the engine and the firewall. In the, in the Tahoe setup, you can't get to those, I mean, you gotta, those top two bolts on the transmission are bare. You gotta get underneath it with a three or four foot long extension and a wobble joint to get to those top transmission bolts. In this setup, I, hell, I can sit on top of the engine and I can take the bolts out of the transmission. You know, so I was pretty happy. What I didn't realize at the time was I got that room <laughs> because the firewall is two or three inches further back, right? Oh, I guess in the way it's set up here, the firewall is two or three inches that way from where the Tahoe was. And where that comes into play is when you bolt the hydro boost on the firewall, it's two or three inches further back than it was in the stock setup. So. I even went to the point I ordered a stock line thinking that, you know, maybe I'd, maybe I'd done something wrong or I wouldn't think it right. So I ordered a, I ordered a line off of a 2002 2500 uh, that had Hydra Boost thinking that that was going to be right. And I get it in and you know what, it looks just like the one I, well, it looks like the one I have before I started bending the hell out of it. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. What, what, what's going on? Finally, you know, I get hit with a two before and it's like, well, that ain't gonna work. So I'm gonna end up having to make new lines for the, the both lines on the Hydra Boost, one coming from the power steering pump to the Hydra Boost and one from the Hydra Boost to the steering box. Uh, that's the only way this thing's gonna lay in there and look nice. Now, if you made brake lines and you have forgot to put the fittings on, yeah, I'm not sure I believe you when you tell me that. <sighs> the other thing is, don't put them on there backwards. <laughs> That gets real frustrating. You, you know, you, you're so proud of yourself that you uh, remember to put the fittings on and then you put them on there backwards. <laughs> so there's our bracket we made. And actually that's, that's pretty stiff. I don't think I'm gonna have to reinforce that at all. Today we're gonna see if we can get the fuel filler neck put in this international pickup. So I got the filler neck out of the Jeep and what I'm thinking is I'm gonna set that filler neck in between the fender well and the inside of the bed. I think I've got enough room. All right. I think that actually turned out pretty good. What in the hell is that? So all kinds of holes. Well, if I quit moving, it'd be all right. It uses the screw that held the throttle cable in. Just so you know, it still makes me smile when I shut this tailgate. I ended up uh, finding a, you know, a, an old antenna pipe. That happens to be the right size fit the Jeep filler neck hoses. I'll get the camera up under there with a light, show you what we got. Oh, shit. Okay, found a piece of cardboard. Let me get that shoved in on both sides. 
Man, I need to teach Ralph how to hold stuff. <laughs>